Hey folks, talking about hard rock drumming today, heavy hitting, we want to do this for a long time. Uh, I've got a lot to talk about today um, in terms of feel, technique, setup, uh, what's involved, what it feels like to actually play this stuff for real. So, uh, here we go. First thing is you want to be loose. You know, these are just the things that I've learned uh, over the 20 years that I've been doing this, actually more than 20 years. Um, you want to be loose, like Angelo Dundee says to uh, to Muhammad Ali. He was a Muhammad Ali's trainer and George Foreman's. You don't want to be tight. You don't want to have um, feel constricted. You want to be loose when you're playing. Everything in this kind of music um, is exploding. It's the drums are being hit really hard, so everything is vibrating. You're not, you know, digging in and inhibiting the natural things that want to happen, like a head vibrating, a shell vibrating, both heads vibrating, cymbals uh, being very free to, you know, to explode and to crash. Um, anyhow, so you do, you do want to be loose. I'd be careful not to stretch. Like, you don't want to be uh, stretching. You just, you need to be loose all the time anyway, generally, right? So, um, so what I do is I just, I just shake shake the arms. Michael Beauclair taught me this. Thank you, Michael. You just want to relax the muscles, get the blood flowing, breathe, you know, you don't want to be going, ah, you especially don't want to stretch if you're not warmed up, if you don't have uh, the blood going um, through the muscles and if your heart's at a really low rate, you know, um, so you need heat to really get the muscles to stretch anyway. Otherwise, I'm told it's like trying to stretch a cold elastic band, which is not a good idea. So anyway, um, the, uh, speaking about muscles, um, one muscle is for this music that's really, uh, I guess, used a lot is the thumb in here. So you, you can kind of check in on that and just see how tight it is, or that's what I do anyway. But, but generally, you should be able to loosen everything up, you know, before um, you're playing. If not, then, then um, stretch earlier, stretch a little bit before you play, um, just to help those muscles out because you're going to need them. Um, your plugs. If you don't know how to put in your plugs, then, then you're screwed. But um, if you're playing with big headphones, like up here, then when it gets time to actually get the stick up to the, you know, the bigger stick heights, then you can hit yourself in the, in that headphone, all the time, and that gets really annoying and distracting. And you don't want to be distracted uh, when you're playing this music. So. With the plug, in case you don't know, you roll it up, boom, this ear gets pulled up, and then what I do is I actually twist and spiral and put the, the plugs in that way. Um, I put band-aids on and then electrical tape. Um, you're gonna need you're gonna need tough hands for this. Don't use lotions and any kind of hand cream. You you want hard, tough hands. Um, calluses are your friends. Um, the stick is is generating a ton of friction uh, with this kind of music, so you really want to um, protect your hands and just get them to where you need them. You know, so in other words, you don't want to be aware and distracted by uh, any kind of pain in your hand that you could have avoided. So what I do is just take a band aid and electrical tape, and I just tape up the areas that. I know I'm gonna, they're gonna need protecting. So for me, it's always the thumb. And the idea with this is it's on medium tight, like just snug. The Band-Aid is designed to stick to your skin. Electrical tape isn't. Um, but if I just left the Band-Aids on, then the stick and, and the sweat and the heat would just shear it off. So then I take the electrical and just good and slippery. I put that medium snug, not too tight, not too loose so that it's not gonna move at all. And if I'm putting, um, actually I, I do tape up the inside of my index in here as well. You could use sport tape as well. If I'm gonna, I, again, I do a Band-Aid and then this on top, then I stretch it out so that it's not tight and so that I'm not aware of the, the feeling of, of um, the tape too much. You know, a little bit of awareness is okay, but not distraction. I don't wanna be distracted by uh, how my hands feel, you know, uh, I want to be playing the music. So, okay, so we do that and I keep extra band-aids and stuff on hand 
drum keys in case stuff gets loose um, in the middle of playing. Um, don't stretch. Yeah, I drink water. I drink water before I start playing. The last thing you want to be doing is you want you don't want to be thirsty because when you're thirsty, your body is already dehydrated. So, so you want to drink. Uh, I don't know. I drink like half a maybe. 500, like half half a liter before playing. Um, you don't want to have to go to the bathroom while you're playing, by the way. But um, yeah, so so drink well before you play for sure. Good pain and bad pain. Okay, um, good pain is lactic acid going to the muscles. Uh, bad pain is numbness, tingling. Circulation is really really important with this level of drumming because it's so athletic. Uh, it's so fast, it's so aggressive. Um, your lungs are going to be pounding like crazy. Your heart is going at easily 160 beats a minute and staying at 160. You know, sometimes it just it gets ramped up like crazy, and your juggler is pounding like crazy, and you're just sweating like a freak, and you're breathing really, really hard, and it's awesome. Um, so that's the good stuff that's supposed to happen. Bad stuff is is cramping up. Uh, the oxygen isn't getting to the the muscles. Uh, your muscles are being overworked, or you're just you're tight. You're so tight that I guess you're inhibiting the blood flow. I don't know, but but you really have to monitor your own the tension in your, uh, especially from the elbows down. You know, um, and uh, we'll get into technique in a sec. But um, but if you're too tight all the time, then it actually creates a smaller sound because you're inhibiting the stick from vibrating and, and giving you uh, a, f a full, um, you know, a happy uh, reaction to everything that you're hitting. The symbols, all that tension is going into a symbol, so a symbol is not as open as it could be. Same for a skin uh, and everything. So, yeah, good pain versus bad pain. It's important to know the difference for sure. Um, let's talk about setup. Okay, I don't know if you can see this, but the the hats are like at my shoulder almost. They're actually a little bit under the shoulder. And the reason for that is I just want the elbow to be naturally in front of me here. I don't know if you can see that, but I don't want to have to do any weird stuff to get at the kit. It should all just be at the end of the stick, you know? And the hats are the... The side of the hi-hat is it's like right in my face. It's not too close. I'm not crowding the kit. It's not too far away. It's certainly not low in the way, which is the worst thing you can do because then you're... You should never see the inside of a drummer's elbow. You know what I mean? There's no reason, like, when you're throwing a ball that you would let go of the ball at the... Down here. You let go of it up here, right? So. So you want to be set up so that the stick is where you would let go of a ball. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so it's just right in there. It's the, sh the shoulder of the stick is where you want to hit stuff. You know, any symbol gets hit in here. This is the weakest part of the stick. And you don't use the tip unless you need it for rolling. You know, there's no reason why you should hit a hi hat. You know, with the tip of the stick. Unless you have no choice. So when your hats are way down here, then all you see is the top of the symbol and the rim. This disappears. It's no longer accessible to you, which makes your rim shots basically impossible to get at. So what happens is it changes your grip and you have to hit with the tip of the stick. So you get a much thinner sound and it sounds weak. It sounds like crap. So also you'll see, if you can see my left hand, that it's, I'm getting this conflict happening here. Right, so it's harder to actually get volume out of the snare because the hats are so low. So the first thing you gotta do is get those hats up real, real high so that you can easily engage both cymbals and not just the top cymbal, you know, but you gotta you play in here, lift the hats up from the hip flexor, the, the muscle that, or a series of muscles that lifts up the whole leg uh, and and you're good to go from there, okay? But really loose in the hand. Uh, it's gotta be a rim shot every time, folks. Sorry, but it can't be the tip of the stick in the middle of the drum 
because then you're missing out on all of this available volume that's naturally inherent in how the drum is made. So you hit a rim shot, which is the middle of the stick basically hitting the rim and the tip of the stick hitting the head at the same time. So here's 50%, here's the other 50, and together. You have to be able to do that at will, whenever you want. Both hands. Here's a quiet rim shot. Loud. Uh, what else? Talking about setup. So start with the throne, uh, even before you do set up your hi-hat. I've got a little bit of, uh, my knees are going up a little bit, and it just helps me to feel, for my center of gravity to be low, center of gravity, sorry, to be low, it, it helps me to hit harder, you know, it just feels like the drums are, they're across my, I guess, stomach, you know, and the stomach area is really, really important for feeling comfortable, or for playing from the stomach really helps to, to feel, um, to give this music what it needs, which is just a lot of aggression and a lot of volume, you know, without having to compensate with your back or without having to do any weird stuff with your hands, you know, in terms of the ergonomic um, relationship between you and, and the kit. So the rim of the drum is easily accessible to me here. And there, you know, I, I can live with the, the bass drum leg coming up and and me going to the rim, uh, there being contact in here. Normally, I wouldn't really I'd avoid that, but because it's this kind of music, then I just I work with it. You know, it's it's really not that big a deal. But I would rather there be a little bit of, of touch between the bottom of the hand and the top of the leg, if it enables me to to feel like this drum is in the proper place for this music, you know? So if, if it's too high, like say at the belly button level, then it feels like it's up in my chin and it that messes up my, my shoulder blade scapula in there. I, I don't wanna be aware of that stuff. I just wanna be able to hit well and to move properly, okay? Speaking of moving properly, um, so for that bass drum with hard rock, it's a, a one dimensional, uh, sound you know it's really not a dynamic um dynamically played drum it's not like jazz where you have a lot of different techniques with the kick and and you get a lot of different tones and you mute it and stuff like that no you hit it hard and you hit it from the the hip up here which is pretty close to your stomach anyway but um yeah you hit it for real so that the whole drum is engaged and, and both heads are vibrating and the shell is vibrating and the drum is it's happy and it's giving you all the volume that it can let the freaking beater come off the head always always let it come off so that you're not muting the drum okay and losing bass you lose bass when you leave a beater into a, a skin so just train your foot to let the beater come off okay <laughs> Man, plus you dent the head, ultimately. Um, what else? Okay, hands, elbows, from the forearm down, the shoulder down. Why do we hit so hard? Because the guitars are slamming loud. I'm, I'm already shouting because I have earplugs in and this is what you want, right? This is a very physical approach uh, to playing. Guitars are slamming loud, bass is slamming loud. Singer is screaming as hard as they can. And the worst thing you can do is be the the weakest link in terms of feel when those are the circumstances of the musical moment, when the feel is that aggressive, you know? So you don't want to be playing with the tip of the stick when the guitars are just slamming, slamming, slamming loud. Um, you want to match the volume. Uh, you want to be too loud. You want to be able to be too loud. You want to be able to not be in the front of house mix because you're putting out so much volume from the kit. It's it's really a worthwhile ability to have, you know, and then you can choose to play quieter as an option versus, um, you know, just being a consequence of your actual lack of technique and feel, right? Um, as snare drum, <clears throat> if it's got a pretty new head on it and will give you lots of attack and volume, 
if you hit it as hard as you can, there's a point where it just can't give you any more volume. And it's the same with the toms. You know, it's giving me a little bit more when I hit it with everything I've got, but not much. So you really have to monitor how hard you're hitting, um, uh, the ratio between how hard you're hitting and how much volume or more volume you're actually getting out. Because when you start to get tired, uh, you need to know why you're getting tired. Are you just out of shape? <clears throat> or are you not getting the volumes and the sounds that you actually need according to how hard you're hitting? So that's the stuff um, that I look for and I watch for when I'm playing in the moment always. Uh, but a snare can give you 110, 115 decibels, you know, which will just take your head off when you're hitting it hard. So, so will hi-hats, well, they won't give you that much, but right next to your head it's a lot of volume the kick won't give you too much it's a low frequency and they're they're down close to the ground but there's a lot of volume as it should be coming from especially the snare which should be your loudest uh, you got to hit your kick with everything like I'm saying and then your your uh, your hats got to be able to pump out a good volume too okay so um, for using the arms, you know, you can't really get away with too much with just the wrist. That's maximum rotation with the wrist. There's a lot of volume there, but it just doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel as natural as swinging your arms a little bit more. So as with fighting, as with, um, yeah, mostly, mostly fighting, the elbows, the forearm comes up like this, like with boxing. Uh, forearm comes up and you know if you're really new to this then what to aim for is just grab your earlobe to start okay to give you an idea of how your shoulder is going to feel and where the natural position of your arm wants to go you know so you just grab your earlobe and that's going to tell you how forward everything actually becomes you know so you really start to play from here with the elbows front. Notice that I'm sitting upright, but I'm not stiff like a board. Just want to have a little bit of a, a bend in there to feel like you're just starting to teeter over the kit. And that actually helps you to hit hard again. I don't know why, but it, it does. This just does not feel natural to have a straight back like that. It feels like you have to focus and concentrate on keeping a straight back, you know? Meanwhile, you don't want to be focused on too much you want to be playing the music you know um, elbows come up front and then look at the hand so the hands just naturally where it wants to go right you put a stick in there and the stick is it's right at your shoulder I know that when I don't feel this when I don't feel the the stick on the back of my shoulder right here before I go to hit cymbals or hit drums if I don't feel that little touch, then I know I'm not really hitting hard for real, you know? So that's another thing that you can start to get used to is, is the, the stick just touching here, you know? In the Middle Ages, they would cut a guy in half, apparently, by using both arms going up and then, you know, use the stomach muscles. Um, you know, there's so much energy just waiting for you to, to use when you wind up like this, and that's really what this is. Um, speaking of, I want to talk about the conflict between the the hands when you're playing on the hi hat. How do you get the left hand, sorry, the right hand out of the way of the left hand when you're going for that rim shot, and when you're when you're playing up here with the left hand? Why do you play from here? Because you need maximum volume out of the drum. Same with the right hand maximum volume out of the hats. So what you do, or what I do, is I aim for the upbeat being, uh, I don't know, I guess this would be a, uh, one, yeah, it would be an upbeat, so at the end of two, at the end of two, the end of one, I'm sorry, the end of one, one, No, you know what? 
it's more like the uh of one. It's the 16th before beat two that I would be here and a lot of drummers would actually be at the full, um, you know, wind up. So one E and a two E and a three E and a four. So that should really help you to put, to put uh, yourself in time. Uh, you have to uncross the hands like this. You want to really get away from the feeling of the right, the dominant limb, uh, like bearing down over the left and inhibiting the left arm, especially when you need volume from the snare real bad. Okay, so it starts in the wrists. You should just be able to uncross the sticks and point them like they're uh, flashlights straight up at the ceiling. You should be able to do that. And then with the elbows, rotating. I don't know if you can see, but there's this, there's a twist happening and there's the up as well. And that gets the sticks out of each other's way. When you go to hit, I noticed that actually the, I have a slight circle in my hand and this just feels good. So it's this I don't know what you would call it, but a slight ellipses or elliptical motion. It's a pretty narrow circle and it just feels good. It feels good in the shoulder to play like this. There's a slight twist that's happening. And I just think of, I'm gonna think of at all. I just try to come up, out, and then back in like that. So in, up and out, and then Next to the head, this is where the sticks should be. Sometimes your hands go up there. I'll never forget seeing Neil Peart when he, you know, finally surrendered the traditional grip that he was doing, uh, I guess, around the test for echo time. And five years later, six years later, got back to, you know, hitting the drums for real. I remember seeing the Rush in concert. And I was way at the back, and I could still, from hundreds of feet away, I could see his left hand next to his head and it was such a relief to see that again you know because he's maxing out the you can't hit any harder than that guy you know for example so so that's a beautiful thing and the drums uh they give you everything they can when you're playing like that um that brings me to what was i going to talk about uh technique oh yeah okay uh hitting as hard as you can well um i find that if I hit at 100% and I keep it at 100%, sorry, I cut out there for a sec, but uh, just one more point about um, about uh, hitting as hard as you can. Um, I actually learned that it's what works for me is to hit at 95%, to go at 95% and to keep that sustained in terms of a level of commitment to the moment with hard rock. Uh, because at 100%, then the wheels start to come off and uh, I start to actually become um, more inconsistent with the with where I'm able to hit the drums and cymbals and everything because the world is just shaking like a it's like being in a mosh pit where you just get flashes of the world you know because you're just so bent on on hitting as hard as you can so so um, that's actually a really important point just to pull back a tiny tiny bit to have the limit to know the limit. Um, but when it, it feels like uh, there's a loss of control that has entered into uh, your playing, then that's going to equate to a, a loss of uh, a feel and of, and of sound. So you really have to keep control of, um, of what you're doing all, all the time. You know, it's, it's a matter of pacing as well, too. So uh, otherwise you start to, your hands connect with stuff. It's harder to be consistent with uh, where you're placing your hands. Uh, you start to, you know, get injured more if that's the case. And I don't know if I really talked about hitting knuckles, uh, for example, on the rim of the drum. But uh, when you're up here and you're not consistently um, moving in the same way every time because you're just so, you're just in a rage so much, um, you can get into, you know, real kind of problem areas like, you know, uh, breaking a knuckle or something, which I've never done, but I'm sure I've come close. Um, uh, 
it's it's just brutal to to hit a drum with your hand or the rim with your hand because you know it's a mistake is what it is anyway but um yeah it's all part of uh of playing this way and everything for sure but it it's there is a difference all i want to add was between uh staying at 100 percent all the time which actually tires you out faster than staying at 95 percent which just is really a different sort of maximum because if you're if you're at 95 you're in control then you can't actually give any more because you you lose control so it's it's just not worth it you know uh okay just wanted to interject that there okay sorry i got cut off uh but when you're breathing that hard your lungs are going like crazy and if you have a clammy wet shirt that's elasticized it's inhibiting it's it's tight so your shirt is tight against your lungs which want to go that way right out and your shirt is in problem solved where there's no shirt okay it's not a looks thing it's uh it just feels really good it feels like oh what a relief right um other things i wanted to talk about positioning kick beater rim shots uh six shoulder in your head good pain versus bad pain uh hands loose hat snare your plugs oh shoes some people play bare feet um, there's a lot of bones in the top of your feet so when the beater comes back this is your foot this is the top of your foot this is the beater say when when this hits the drum and comes back and hits the top of your foot it hurts like hell because there's all it's bones there so you have to be careful that um, you know, to avoid that kind of thing for sure. Uh, you have to be able to lift your whole leg up, but keep the ball of your foot on the pedal so that you still know where that pedal is at all times, obviously. Um, sometimes the when things get crazy, the, the back of the beater can come back and and hit the inside of your of the ankle on your right foot, of the your in, inner left ankle on your right foot that hurts like hell uh but this is some of the stuff that happens you know I hit myself in the face a billion times i hit that knuckle like we're talking about many many times um the with band-aids and the uh and tape or whatever technique you use to protect your hands um the reason you do that is so that you don't get blisters while you're playing because that is the worst what happens is the uh, you're playing the blister forms and then it breaks and then the skin a bunch of juice comes out and then the skin gets pushed off to the side and then all the 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 sweat in your hand and the salt stings like crazy and it's just raw exposed flesh there's no blood necessarily but it it's distracting you know <laughs> i put sticks right in my mouth you know i've hit myself in the hit myself in the back of the ear you know, anyway, what do you expect with this kind of music, right? Um, so, yeah, this is it's something to get used to is is playing up in here. You have to want it, you have to believe in it for sure. Um, to develop those rim shots, you just start with the wrist. And then start to get the stick going up be loose in the hand and you don't want to be hanging on to the stick like that you want to be hanging on to the stick here a little more medium tight but from the back of the hand the back two fingers and these guys they listen to the stick you know can't think of another way to describe it but they're on the stick at all times you want to start to engage the elbow joint until Uh, and then eventually up there. When sticks break, you should have sticks on the left side, sticks on the right side. Uh, speaking of drumming muscles, there's one in here and there. So that's going to get developed if it isn't for you already. Uh, forearm, you can use a lot of forearm in here. So this muscle, which you can feel when you close your hand, let me do that. That gets used like crazy um, and then this thumb one as well so that's the stuff that you really want to try and keep loose and 
and just and keep an eye on, you know, um, what else? We talked about the stick hitting the symbols, uh, the side of the symbol. You know, you want to you want to hit here, in there, you know, and then you hit it well. Don't leave the stick in the symbol. You want to hit it and go through it and come back away from it on a on that circle we talked about, that shallow circle, so that the symbol is just able to just explode, just erupt happily, which is what it's designed to do, you know? You don't want the tip coming in on the symbol like that. It gives you a very thin and doinky and lame sound, and that's no good. So you have to hit it, shoulder to the edge, right through, Positioning the symbol is at the end of the the throw, right? Not too far away, not too close. It should just be comfortable. The left has to get at that snare, no problem. It's got to be able to get at the hat, no problem. The toms are just right at the end of the the stroke as well. The the floor should be um, at the same level as your snare, you know. The ride should be comfortable. It's, you should never be thinking about it because it's, you should be too busy playing the music because you're so comfortable. It, you shouldn't be wondering about whether something's in the right position. You know, um, if you need the bell, you should be able to get at the bell. If you need the the surface of the ride, then you should be able to get there. So you'll notice that this is a really, really shallow angle of, God, I don't know, 15, 20 degrees. And if I, I want the rim real bad because I crash a ride all the time. One thing I do is I play rim shots. I play the this part of the stick on the cymbal. And that gets me away from playing for the tip again, which I don't want. What you're hearing is this hitting the ride like that. And it's not tight, it's loose. And there's still rebound. Need the bell it's right up there I want the, the the edge it's right there so when I can get everything I need from this symbol no problem I've got access to everything that it can give me no problem and it's not really the same with a crash a crash you just you don't really need the bell at all right you don't need the surface of it it's just it got one function it's just needs to be wasted and um, it's the same with another crash over here uh, there's a slight shallow angle with these guys, and they're just at the end of the, the stroke, you know? I can't recommend having another crash enough over on the right side. These are 18s. These are, this is a pretty small size for me. I have a hard time playing a crash with this kind of music under uh, 19, um, because it's just, it's over to again quickly, you know? We need a, you need a big sound. So uh, I love to use a um, two 19s. Um, it's, it's just awesome to have that, and I use both of the the same symbols on either side, which actually sound different anyway. But um, uh, definitely a 14-inch snare, uh, 14 inch hats for sure. No smaller than a 22. Um, I'm in a, a studio with smaller sizes today, but for harder music, the preference for me is 24 kick, 13 rack. No smaller than a 12. Um, 16 over here I have a hard time with. It's just not big enough. So I would go 24, 13, 18, you know? It's actually a lot of fun to have two big, big floors, 16 and 18 over here. And if you want to tell me that you're happy with a 14 and 16, then have a great time, you know? Or a 10, uh, a 10 inch Tom on a hard rock set. It's just, it doesn't work. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, um, what else? I've got to breathe. I have the word breathe written on my toms. I breathe through the mouth. You need a lot of air. Uh, try not to hold your breath when you drink fills um, or ever, because you just you need all of the oxygen that you can get. It 
it should be, you can't really see it from this angle, but you should be able to get at it, no problem. You should be able to hit a tom without hitting your crash, you know? So this guy is just a little bit over to the right from the crash. The crash access area there is just a little bit over from the snare rim where I would hit the snare. So you can see that where I hit the, the snare, but you probably can't see that, sorry, but is it's just to the left of where I would hit the, the tom, not by much. And all of that is just to the left where I hit the crash. And all of that is slightly, you know, uh, over a little bit more is the hat. So you get this, you can kind of see the, the angles here are really, it's all kind of close together, you know, but, but there's no fight, there's no conflict. Uh, I, I never hit a hi-hat on my way to hit a snare, you know. Which actually brings me to elbows, the whole question of elbows. Um, and if your elbows are up, I mean, guys would play this way a lot in the 90s and 80s, and Taylor Hawkins will still play like this a lot, and he does he does this crazy thing where the he hit, hits the snare like this and sits really low, and that's all awesome and everything, but uh, if the elbows are up, then you better be aware of them being up because it turns your hands over, number one, and it really isolates your shoulders in a weird way. It makes you aware of your shoulders, I find, you know? The question is, do they really need to be up? You know, why, why are they up? Does it feel good? Well, that's good, but you really should not be aware of your back, you know? You should be aware of, of your shoulders. You, everything should just feel good. So. Uh, it's okay for your elbow to go up as part of a stroke, but they shouldn't stay up when you're playing, you know? Um, because it just, it's not normal, you know? If you're playing a djembe in a park, you don't go like this. You do with congas a little bit, your elbows come up a little bit. And I know in, um, in marching drumming, the elbows go out, but the elbows don't stay out as you play. Just, you know, try for yourself and you'll see that it just doesn't feel right. So. Uh, what else? When you hit a, a bell, no reason to hit the tip. You should hit the shoulder. Lamps work really well when they're wide. Again, that's room shots all the way. I've seen guys have really flat toms. And this area in here, it feels like a tendon stretch, like tendons are stretching when they're overextended. There's no reason why you should have to get into this kind of problem area, you know? I mean, I don't know why guys do this. I've done it myself for sure, but, but the stick wants to hit something real bad around there, you know? Like the palm of the hand it's ready for contact about there. So, so is the stick, you know? This is just an extension of, of your arm, right? So if you're down here, then, you know, I guess it's okay, but you don't, I, there's still an angle here, right? Even though I'm flat at 90 degrees here, when there's a tom that's facing up down here like that, then the hand, it still has to go that way, which tightens this up when you started back here. So I've seen this tons and tons of times and it's just, it's scary because you can do permanent damage for sure with this, you know? Uh, also, it might force you to, to want to be thumbs up a little bit. And it's just, it's just it's weird, you know, to, to max out um, a part of your body's Limited rotation, you know, it just does not want, want to rotate more than that. It's not designed to do that. So it's so easy just to twist and to relax and to hit the thing hard, you know, even better for you to have the, a drum up a little bit, you know, the toms up. There's a reason why most people have the same kind of setup because they played so many billions of hours. Um, it just works, you know.
Okay, uh, wide flams. <laughs> stuff you know I really really do uh, last point your snare has got to be opposite the core opposite your your belly button groin you know down in there um, and your your knee shouldn't have anything touching it on the right side or on the left side you know uh, you really got to be careful that you're not gonna step lift up that leg and then come banging down on some metal um, part of the drum, you know, or a tom leg or something weird like that. So you really got to protect your joints with this. Uh, and that goes for the left side as well. You don't want your, your inside of your left knee to be hitting um, a snare throw off, you know, or the, or anything. Your elbows should never hit a wall. They should, you should never touch anything with your elbows back here there should be nothing no amps or anything no contact around you you know this is really precious area behind you up in here and down so that you're not you don't screw yourself up all right have fun go slow repeat sweat uh enjoy <laughs>